Hi, this is my review of ERA Hitman. This is a role-playing game about assassins with amazing psychic abilities. Here they are known as kinetic abilities. You could also create an assassin that fully specializes in using more mundane skills, tools and weapons. However, I think you would be missing out on the fun. This is a pocket role-playing game. It's a simple system with everything that you need to play a complete campaign and many other campaigns, in fact, without going too much into details. There is a lot of freedom when it comes to how you're going to handle the setting, the mechanics, anything related to the gameplay. Now, let's talk about the quality of the PDF. I have a nitpick and a criticism. My nitpick is that the document does not have bookmarks. However, considering the table of contents is fully hyperlinked, and added to that, this is a short book, just 46 pages long, I don't think you'll have trouble navigating the entire document. My criticism concerns that I found a few typos, but they won't present an obstacle when trying to understand the content. But besides that, everything is well written and explained, the graphic design is good, the illustrations are appropriate, they have that comic book feel to them, so overall the quality is good. Now, let's talk about the content. First, you have an introduction. In this game, you are a hitman, and you belong to the Assassin's Guild. This guild is quite notorious for eliminating any target, as long as the price is right. And this is accomplished through the following incentive. If any hitman that belongs to the Assassin's Guild fails to kill his target, he is now targeted by the guild. So if you belong to the Assassin's Guild, you better not mess up. Otherwise, your life could be forfeit. So there is a bit of John Wick type of situations tossed into this game. This guild is highly organized. They even have a cleanup crew to remove anything that could reveal some evidence as to the assassinations. So they make sure that the missions are very clean with no leads and no clues and evidence as to who committed the crime. Now in this guild, there are some assassins that have kinetic abilities. These are over the top psychic powers. They are not as powerful as those that you would find in ERA The Empowered. If you haven't seen my review of that role-playing game, please check out the link in the description below, but they are still quite extraordinary. So in this small introduction, you have information about the setting without going too deep into the details. So you can modify anything about the guild, about the world itself, etc. After that, we have information on character creation. Assassinations are handled by specialized teams, so it's a great idea to have a wide variety of talents. First, you determine your experience level. You have newbie, experienced, elite, and veteran. One experience level is not better than the others. So for example, a newbie is going to have a bonus to stamina. A more experienced hitman is going to have a bonus to dexterity. An elite hitman is going to get a bonus to intelligence, and a veteran is going to get a bonus to wits. So it all depends on your type of specialization and the type of character concept that you have decided to create. Then you flesh out the backstory of your character, the history with the Assassin's Guild, with any sort of task or mission that he took on. And you also have the assassination style. You choose one of these styles so you can better focus your assassin or your hitman. You have close and personal which is about approaching someone in close quarters combat, you're usually quite strong and stealthy. You have lying in wait, this is about hiding, remaining on the spot, waiting for the right moment to strike, and you're also quite hard to trace. Then you have trapper, this is about killing your target indirectly, setting up ambushes, arranging dubious accidents, and using all sorts of traps. And then you have the sniper style, which is about taking your enemy from afar, they won't even notice you. Then you determine your quirk. Each assassin has a sort of weakness when it comes to his or her personality or psychology even. Maybe you're all about the money. You'll do whatever it takes to get the job done and you constantly negotiate for more money. Or maybe you are scarred, so you have this ugly scar and you are easy to recognize. Or maybe you're a sort of perfectionist and you always want the perfect kill. And these are some examples of quirks that could play out as obsessions that could hinder your progress within a mission. Then you determine your attributes. 
you have different categories. You have the category of potence, which has to do with affecting the world around you through strength and intelligence. You also have charisma in this category that is about social presence and influence. Then you have the defense category concerning stamina and willpower. This is about withstanding anything that the world throws at you. And then you have the reaction category, which has to do with dexterity, wits, luck. This is about reacting to the world around you. Now, these attributes are not generated randomly. You distribute a number of points. It's a sort of point by system. Then you have information on how to choose your skills. You also assign different points to them. You have different categories such as personal skills like brawl, investigation, melee, stealth. You have technical skills such as engineering, explosives, medicine, pilot, and you have interaction skills such as esteem, instruction, persuasion, and seduction. These are all broad categories to cover any situation. Then you have information on how to calculate your derived stats, such as size, how much pain your character can take, your initiative modifier, your speed, your defense, etc. They are all derived from your attributes. And we will see more about these stats later on when I talk about the system. And finally, you have information on how to buy kinetic abilities. You have a number of kinetic points, and the stronger the ability, the more expensive it's going to be. Now here's the catch. When you spend your kinetic points, you have to keep in mind that you need a few points to cast that sort of kinetic ability. So if you want to create a force field or you want to manipulate some sort of material substance, you will have to pay kinetic points. So if you spend all of your eight kinetic points, you will have no points at all to use your abilities. So you need to keep those spare points as a sort of fuel for your powers. You could also exchange kinetic points to gain more skills. So if you wanted a character focused completely on using skills without using any of these kinetic powers, you could also do that. You could also spend some skill points on kinetic abilities instead. Now let's talk about some of these kinetic abilities. You have force field creation, which is about creating and controlling fields of various shapes and sizes. So for example, maybe you want to create a ball shaped force field to try to knock your enemy off someplace. Or maybe you want to create a force field in the shape of a melee weapon. This is a very advanced form of using the power and a bit more expensive. You also have material control, which is about controlling a specific nominated material, such as bone, glass, air, rock, shadows, anything. And you exert great control over this. Maybe you just want to manipulate the material to create some sort of effect that distracts or confuses the enemy. This would be a minor manifestation of this kinetic ability. But maybe you want to imbue the material with intelligence, allowing it to act on its own to follow a simple task. This is a highly advanced ability. Then we have temporal manipulation. This is about the ability to manipulate time for all enemies within a limited area. You could slow down time, speed it up, or even stop it completely. So you could speed up time for a small area and for a specific number of enemies, or you could stop time all around you, allowing you to move quickly. That is, that does not apply to you. Then we have force control. This is the most powerful of the kinetic powers and the most expensive. This is about manipulating the fundamental forces of reality. So for example, you could manipulate electromagnetic fields. You could change the direction of gravity in a target area. You could even nullify nuclear forces and at its highest level, you could even vaporize a person instantly. Now, following that, we have the section of equipment with information on different weapons such as fiber wire, long bows, crossbows, knives, syringes, pistols, automatic weapons, and even antimatter rifles. There's also information on grenades, rocket launchers, flamethrowers, also armor such as light armor, body armor, and all sorts of gear such as binoculars, forgery kits, gas masks, lockpicks, precision tools, painkillers, etc. After that we have the rules. Now this uses the ERA system, just like ERA the consortium, ERA survival, so it's a dice pool system. It's similar to the old World of Darkness type of games. You roll a set of 10-sided dice 
depending on the task at hand on your attributes and your skills and you try to roll above a certain number for each die that reaches that threshold you get a success so you try to accumulate as many successes as possible and this is an exploding dice type of system for each 10 that you roll you get to roll another die so you can get some very over the top results not all actions will be handled via dice rolls of course there are trivial actions that will be automatically successful or in, it will result in failure as well but you have information on the different thresholds and successes so for example very easy tasks you would only need to roll above two or three medium tasks would be six or seven and very hard tasks almost impossible tasks you would need to roll ten so it all depends on what you want to do the situation your tools your abilities now you could end up with a failure or a fumble which is quite catastrophic depending on your dice roll if you roll one on any die that's considered a failure if more failures than successes are achieved on a single dice roll the roll is considered a fumble so if you rolled one more failure than successes the attempt cannot be retried and maybe you end up in a disadvantageous position but what if you rolled two more failures than successes you usually take pain damage we will talk more about pain damage later on you will end up hurting yourself but if you roll three more failures than successes it would result in a severe injury from the attempt so there's always a risk involved in any significant action that you take you also have more information on what happens when you roll fewer than three dice in a single roll and how fumbles apply to those like for example if a player is only allowed to roll one die any fumble will automatically be treated as a severe fumble following that you have information on the level of success that you can reach it depends on how many dice you roll above what is needed during a check so for example if you only rolled one or two successes of what you need you would only succeed with no more benefits but if you rolled three or four successes above that you would get a moderate success so you could achieve your normal action and you also get a small number of successful outcomes maybe you are running and shooting and you also manage to duck behind cover but what if you roll perhaps seven or eight dice above what is needed your character succeeds in a seemingly impossible action maybe you are running and shooting and you move so fast that the enemy actually loses track of you and now you end up behind cover and you're also right in front of the enemy's blind spot you also have more information on how to handle opposed roles that is getting more successes than your opponent is better you also have information on when a role is active or passive and now passive actions require more successes than active actions to achieve the same effect so for example if you're just trying to look for anything suspicious it's going to be a passive action and it's going to be more difficult for you to spot something unlike when you're for example looking for someone or something specific that is a more focused action and it would be a bit more easy to be successful at it you also have information on size to use as a benchmark for different things you also have information on for example the defender usually wins contested checks both in and outside of combat if there is a tie the defender is going to get an advantage you also have information on how to use your luck points that are determined by your luck attribute they are basically used to add successes to a roll and to remove failures so in this way you can modify your dice rolls you also have information on how to handle unskilled rolls that is when your character has no skill points in the required skill you can roll the chosen attribute plus luck in an attempt to achieve a lucky success the success threshold for this type of roll is always 10 making it very difficult to achieve following that we have general rules on how to use kinetic abilities you need to have enough kinetic points remaining to use them you also have a discretionary rule where a character is able to spend all remaining points for a single use of a power and to use your powers you roll a number of dice determined by your remaining kinetic points so that represents a pool of psionic power that you have been storing for the right moment you also have different examples on how to handle kinetic ability power levels so maybe for example if you want to remove the air from someone's lungs they tell you the number of successes that you need to do that and to concentrate the effect to keep it going and you can do some really over the top things of course some extraordinary things but within the fictional context they try to handle things a bit more realistically that is for example it's possible to create a sort of 
force field that serves as a boat or platform. Maybe you need to infiltrate some place that is across some lake or river and you do not want to get wet because that would leave puddles behind you or drops of water and they could easily track you. So you could use your kinetic powers to create this platform over the water to move across. However, you wouldn't be able to create a sort of force vehicle to move across the ocean. So there are limits to your powers. Now, when it comes to damage and healing, there are two types of damage that you can take. Pain damage and health damage. Pain damage represents pain and fatigue. It usually ends up with you unconscious and perhaps bleeding out. So although quite severe, it's not as lethal as health damage. These are life-threatening injuries. If a character's health boxes are filled with damage, they die. Now, when we get to combat, I will give more details about this, but suffice to say, you have different boxes. Pain damage boxes and health damage boxes. And if they fill out, depending on the type of damage, you will end up unconscious or dead. And there are damage and kill thresholds for each weapon. And depending on the dice that you roll, if you roll above the damage threshold, you're going to deal health damage, unless your weapon specifically says that it deals pain damage. But if you roll above the kill threshold, the target is immediately killed. So this is an important consideration in this game because you are playing as a hitman. You also have details on how to heal yourself using perhaps skill checks or substances or maybe just healing naturally. In my opinion, this is a bit more on the pulpy side. So you will be able to jump right back into the action. Maybe it's because of all that kinetic power presence in the game that healing is accelerated. Following that, we have status effects such as bleeding, being blinded, drowning, suffocation, electrocution, fire and acid damage, what happens when you are horrified by something, maybe some sort of substance or some sort of kinetic power, what happens when you are poisoned or stunned. Now there's also the survival mode. I've seen this in other era games. This is a state in which you reduce incoming damage. You can only enter this state or mode by achieving three survival plus stamina successes. And you can maintain this sort of mode if you achieve an additional success each turn. So for example, if you want to keep this survival mode in the following turn, you will need to roll four successes. In the next turn, five successes and so forth. However, when the mode ends, you cannot attempt this mode for three combat turns or 30 seconds. Now let's talk about combats. There aren't too many different techniques, attacks, kicks, hand strikes, it's just a few simple rolls depending on what you want to do and it all depends on the situation, the type of tool or weapon that you are using, perhaps some details concerning the battlefield, maybe you are attacking from the higher ground, maybe you are attacking from behind cover, maybe your character is shooting sideways or maybe you are designed to kick and punch in a sort of flurry of blows maybe you are attacking the vital points of your opponent, it's highly cinematic and not too simulationist. So at the start of combat, you make an initiative roll. You roll one die for each character. And this is added to the initiative modifier and the highest number goes first. Now, each character can move and perform a single action. But if you decide to use two weapons, if you want to go akimbo or dual wielding, you could carry out two attacks per turn, but with a penalty to your dice pool. You have details on hiding behind cover, moving in combat, making sneak attacks, and melee combat is quite simple. First, you determine your hit dice pool. This is usually formed by combining strength and melee against the target defense. So if you have strength 3 and melee attack 2, it would be 5 dice in that roll. And this applies to any other check in era hitman. If you want to use a skill even outside of combat, you would add your attribute plus your skill to determine if you are successful. So in the case of combat, you roll your strength plus your melee against your target defense. That is, your target's defense is going to reduce the number of dice that you can roll. And the threshold to be successful at an attack is 7. It should be kept that way because otherwise it would be too easy. For each success that reaches this threshold, you get a number of dice to use in the damage roll. In the damage roll, you roll your number of successes in the hit roll and depending on the weapon that you are using, depending on the damage or kill threshold, you could either damage your target or kill that target outright. 
This damage threshold and kill threshold can be affected by the target's damage modifier, such as, for example, using armor. And the same applies to all other forms of attack, unarmed attacks, ranged attacks, uh, grappling. Although when grappling, you have a few more options. You could choose to wiggle free if you are being grappled, or you could deal damage to your opponent. Maybe you have him on a lock, or maybe you want to break the opponent's neck. This is quite difficult, but possible. And of course, the attributes and skills that you will use will vary depending on the type of attack. So when it comes to ranged attacks, you're not going to be using your strength, you're going to be using your wits plus gunnery, minus the target defense. But the same process of determining successes to make a damage roll, it's also the same. However, keep in mind that there is a lot of flexibility when it comes to the era system. Depending on all sorts of situations, maybe some attributes may not apply during particular tasks. Like for example, if you are using a skill, either inside or outside of combat, let's say some science related task, maybe when you're just researching something or trying to figure out a formula or making sense of an obscure chemical composition, maybe you would roll your intelligence plus your skill. But what if you are mixing highly volatile substances you could even trigger an explosion. It would make more sense to use dexterity plus your science-related skill instead. You also get details on thrown weapons, on how to use them, that is, and what happens when you use a weapon that has an area of effect. How many characters are going to be damaged by that area? And at the end of the book, we have a section with advice for the Game Master. You have general advice on how to handle unlimited ammunition, you usually do not have to worry about how many shots are being fired unless it has to do with a very specific situation like a sustained gunfight then it will be interesting to keep track on, on how many bullets are left you also have tips on game master flexibility, encouraging creativity how to handle the strengths and weaknesses of kinetic abilities because you can get quite creative with your powers there is no hard set of rules on how to use them, you have the mechanics on how to activate them, the points that you will spend, the difficulty of using them, but you can come up with any sort of effect related to uh, your type of force manipulation or time control effect. You also have information on how to run a different type of campaign. Maybe instead of trying to kill someone, you are trying to protect the target from hitmen. So now you are a sort of bodyguard. You also have information on how to attack vehicles and how vehicles could attack your character, of course. This game is not specialized in that type of game. You do not have a specialized subsystem handling all sorts of complicated combat maneuvers when it comes to vehicles, but you do have information on the damage threshold and the kill threshold for anyone inside of the vehicle. They are better armored or protected inside of the vehicle, of course. So vehicles in era Hitman are going to be part of an encounter rather than a recurrent element within the encounter. Maybe it's just to make a small check to see if your character could maneuver his motorcycle through a crowded street, or maybe you are flying quite close to the mountains with your plane or your helicopter and you need to land somewhere without crashing. In a way, this feels a bit like the opposite of Era Balam, another pocket role playing game using the Era system. I highly recommend that you check out my review of that one. It's a sort of retro video game shoot 'em up or space shooter type of experience. It's really cool, but in that game, almost all of the actions occur while you are inside of your ship. In, and in the case of Hitman, most of the action is going to occur while you are on foot. So in Era Balam, you have a simple system to handle perhaps some uh, simple gunfights or outmaneuver type of encounters outside of your ship. And in Era Hitman, here you have simple rules for some situational and potentially short vehicle encounters. You have more details on the dangers of being an assassin, how to use different attributes and skills for different checks. Like I mentioned, the system is quite flexible. Information how to level up your character. They do not acquire experience points. They level up by achieving different objectives, reaching different goals. You also have some example missions, which all have to do with assassinating someone, but depending on who that someone is, it's going to be a very difficult mission. Some missions will require you infiltrating some place. Some other missions are a bit easier on you, maybe you have the support of the Assassin's Guild. Some missions could be all-out war. It all depends on the target and the method utilized. Now, what do I think of ERA Hitman? I think this is a great game. 
if you want to play as a sort of psychic assassin. If you're looking for something a bit more hard sci-fi, you could also play this game and substituting kinetic abilities for skills. After all, you have that system to convert kinetic points into skill points, but the kinetic abilities separate this game from other assassin type of games. They are over the top without going all out high fantasy or high modern fantasy. There is a lot of room for creativity when handling any of the kinetic powers. It all depends on thinking outside of the box and coming up with some original or at the very least slick solutions. The system is very easy to understand. The setting is so malleable and flexible to adapt it to any sort of campaign or tone. So I highly recommend that you get Era Hitman. If you're looking for psychic assassins, this is the role playing game to get. Well, thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you to those that have been sending gift certificates via Drive-Thru RPG. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, all the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thanks and see you later.